Hi, Miss Naya. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Are building, you building this house? It's taken about a year, <laughs> but we're getting there. Look at she's building. Before anything, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the building process of how you build houses here, how you purchase land for my brothers and sisters that are looking to return to Ghana. And I have a very special guest with me. She's like an aunt to me. Her name is Miss Naya. So you guys, please help me welcome Miss Naya. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Well, I just love having you on. Thank you so much for coming on my channel. Thank you. So, so where are you from? Well, I am uh, originally born in Ghana to two American parents way back in the 60s when uh, Kwame Nkrumah invited all of the diasporans back. Okay. But then I left when I was one and a half, and so I didn't come back till 50 years later. So wow. I came back in 2016. Wow, you've been here a little minute now. Yeah, I have. I have. I've been here for three years. Uh -huh. So I call myself doing research. Uh -huh. So I've been researching uh, uh, for like two years. And then I decided, hey, uh -huh. instead of me pulling out 2,000 CDs out of the ATM every five days just to <laughs> party and go, you know, right. have fun. Like turn up, right? Right, turn <laughs> up. I was like, well, let me actually do something I'm gonna be here mm. so let me put down some roots okay. so I went to um, one of the whatsapp groups um, and I said does anyone know anyone selling land mm -hmm. okay. and I was um, suggested a few people and I went to see some places that was a bit too high so this one other guy um, he uh, approached and so I went and I saw some land way up in the mountains where I'm building now and um, I went through a process of, he was he allowed me to pay for the land in installments. So it was okay. 10,000 CDs. 10,000? 10, 10,000 CDs okay. for the land. At that time, the exchange was about 4.4. Oh, okay, so this is a little, like about a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. was, so this was like in 2017 when I actually initially started purchasing the land. So I finally finished paying for the land and then at the beginning of 2019, say February, I came and I started building. So I happily started, got everything together, got the, um, the uh, contractor. And the day we got ready to start building, uh -huh. these guys came in and um, said, you got to stop building. What? Because the land was not theirs to sell. You're kidding. And so I'm like, what? So the contractor was like, we're up here and they're saying they're going to bring guys up here and stop the, you know, stop us from working. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be in any land dispute. So I had to call this guy that sold me the land. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these guys are saying that, you know, it wasn't yours. To say. So long story short, I ended up having to pay for the land again to the rightful owners. Oh. Wow, are you serious? And that's something that actually happens here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now I'm still, um, you know, going to be um, pursuing getting my 10,000 CDs back from oh, the that's, that's from the fraudster. But um, as you can see, the house is nearly finished, mm -hmm. and um, things worked out. So I ended up paying 18,000 CDs for the land instead of the the initial 10 that I, I thought. And then so far, to get it to where it is, I've spent about maybe 28,000. Wow, you know what? I'm so happy that you're going through this because a lot of diasporans that are coming here are looking to purchase land, build homes. And it's kind of, I had you on here because you've gone through the experiences. You've got burned, you've gone through the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Right. So that that is always so important. So, so can you tell us kind of how the, the different like building materials, how they differ in terms of like, because of course coming from the West, we used to drywall, especially in the States, right. you know, they build houses differently. So could you share with us kind of how they differ and what sure. you're doing with your house? What I've noticed is that um, 
everything here, like I, I'm, I, live, I lived in Oakland, California, so you'd see how construction going up, and it would be a wooden structure, and then they would, you know, build from right. there. Here, nobody starts with a wooden structure because okay. of the tropical um, climate. Oh, so that's what it is. is yes, that why? it's the tropical climate and the termites and the other bugs, bugs that like to eat wood. It just wouldn't stay that long. Now, there's a really innovative person named Zozo, shout out to Zozo, um, <laughs> who's building out of pallets because the wood has already been treated and it, mm. it will not, um, you know, get eaten by, by bugs. But the, they use concrete blocks here and the blocks are made, in, some in a factory, some of the guys make them right there as, you're, as they're building. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, the uh, they can be done really well where they're sturdy mm -hmm. and sometimes they can be done really crumbly so those are the okay. things you have to look out for make sure that you have good concrete blocks mm -hmm. um, make sure that you have someone from Ghana on your team working okay. with you that's not gonna allow um, you know things to go awry Right, because there are a lot of opportunists, and not everyone, but there are a lot of opportunists, um, just like everywhere else, and they will try to um, take advantage of, of you, especially when they hear our accent. They think, right. oh, yeah. Miss Moneybags, and I'm like, no, exactly. I guarantee you, you have more money than me. <laughs> show, that show is the truth, okay? Yeah, it really is. That show is the truth. So, so, do you, so during your, your building process and how you purchased your land, you know, could you please also kind of shed light on the things that maybe people should look out for purchasing your land? Right. So the main thing to do, which is what I did, mm -hmm. um, but I kind of, because I had befriended this guy, mm -hmm. I thought that, oh, I'll just go ahead and not be extra um, diligent, mm -hmm. which I should have been. Um, but the first thing to do is you go, you have someone show you the land. Okay. Once they show you the land, then you ask them, you, if, if you're interested, you ask them for the, an indenture. They will hand you an indenture that has um, a piece of paper and a map uh, um, showing the, of the site. Really? That you okay. have to then take to the Lands Commission and have them do okay. a search on the name of the person mm -hmm. who is now selling you or leasing you the land. One thing is you can only lease land for up to 99 years. And that's so oh, that okay. everybody can't come and buy up Ghana. Oh, well, so you sense. lease it with an option to re, you know, for your and you know, for your descendants to to re renegotiate the lease after the 99 years is So your up. descendants that would be left on your descendants to do. Well, you put it in your you put it in the indenture. You put oh, that clause okay. in there. Um, one thing I do is I do indentures. I type up my own indentures so that if you do, you want to get someone that you can work with. Mm. And you can say, I want to make sure that I can name this person to, mm. to um, be able to take things over afterwards. So uh, actually you can buy it, you can lease it for 50 years if you're not a Ghanaian. Since I was born here, they put 99 years for me. So if you are a Ghanaian, it's 99 years. If you're not, it's 50, and after that 50, then you renegotiate. Oh, okay, so what is one, just if you had just one little nugget, one piece of advice for diasporans that are looking to, to purchase and build a home, what would that piece of advice be? It would be to do it, um, do a lot of things yourself. Go and, and speak to the Lands Commission people yourself. Go and say, okay, this is the indenture I was given. Can you please make sure that um, the person who's selling me this land is the person authorized to do so. Okay. You know, is, is the land still in this person or this family's name? And then after that, when you get ready to build and you get a contractor or, mm -hmm. or somebody else, make sure that you're there on site or have someone with your best interest on site mm -hmm. at all times, like once every two days. Okay, just to make sense. sure that your materials that you're actually purchasing are going toward your house. Because sometimes you get through building and your contractor's house has a whole nother wing on it from See? the materials that are <laughs> supposed to be used for your house. Oh, wow. See, it's really important to have that protection there because, you know, 
well, we definitely with just you. It's like you know, thing we you get burned. You do. You, do, you get burned. We've seen it. You know, it happens. But it's always good to just have that protection. Right. But it's definitely doable. Yes. It really is. Oh, and it's and it's a beautiful process, and it's nice. And where I'm building, um, I'm sure you show. Um, the the scenery is so nice. It's up on the hill. It's breezy. The roads are kind of rough, and we're going to work on that. But I know that in a few years, that whole area will be developed and and built up to be very um, much more convenient. My builder did not build the way that I wanted him to when I was in America. Mm -hmm. um, driving Uber and Lyft, making money to build this, and I was sending the money back to him. That's not a preferred method to okay. build because you can't see what your money's going toward. So come mm -hmm. to find out he did not use the best of materials. Mm -hmm. um, nor did he um, make the rooms as large as I would have wanted them to be. So these were really small rooms to me. Tell me, what do you do? You. Um, I do paving tiles um, from Neoplast Limited. Okay. That's what I do. Okay. Uh, it's, a form, it's a form of um, uh, concrete product in which we use uh, Recycle plastic. Yeah, recycled plastic um, to form the paving bricks. We use some materials, we mix it with other materials, then uh, we produce the paving bricks. Yeah. Oh, okay. And your name, so, sir? I'm Sam. Sam. Yeah, but the only difference between this one and then the concrete one, the main concrete one that you see, like ash, like this, is this one, it doesn't produce heat in the house. Mm -hmm. It doesn't produce heat in the house, more like the other one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Because mm. I might want to build a small all these quarters out of the uh, okay. thing, like for right here. Okay. You know, one more room. But you got to give me a good price. Is there anything during the process that you would have done differently that you would like to? Oh yes, definitely. Mm. Just one little nugget. <laughs> yes. Okay. I would have definitely. Um, made sure that the name matched on the title before I started building. Okay. Because there was um, a name that didn't match on there. So when I showed it to the guy who's initially, but he was like, oh, this had mm -hmm. been bequeathed to me. He lied and said something else. And because oh, okay. I had known him and actually done a cashew business with him, mm -hmm. met his family, met his kids, uh -huh. I thought that he would have been, you know, more right. forthright and forthcoming. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, so I lived and I learned. And it's, support, it's all a learning process, bro. It is. It's all a learning and, process. But the house is going to be great afterwards. It's going to be amazing, and I'm so excited for you because you deserve it. You're a very awesome person. So can you give us like a ballpark, you know, kind of time frame of when your place will be done? Yeah, um, it should be done by July. I'll say my birthday, which is July 8th. It should be done. So by your birthday, yes. you're going to be, you're gonna be turned party. up. A big party going to happen. <laughs> I am. Okay, so as a side note, mm -hmm. this is as a side note, um, just wanted to let you guys know that Miss Naya here is a beautiful wordsmith. And I had the pleasure of seeing her perform at a jazz concert here about a couple weeks ago. And her beautiful poem is called Ghana, You Know Me. So if you could please share with... Um, with the viewers, you are a beautiful poem to Ghana. Hmm. It's called, it's called My Love Letter to Ghana. And it's Ghana, you remember me. Okay. When we pass each other on the street, you greet me with etesane, tete, efwa. But then I open my mouth and you realize I've been gone a while. But Ghana, you remember me. I look just like you, Ama, Afia, Ajua, Mansa, Na, Ghana, you remember me. My grandmother's 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 great grandmother and your grandmother's 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 great grandmother were sisters. Mm. That fateful day your grandmother ancestor awoke to the absence of her sweet sister. She cried, oh. She mourned until the day she died. Ghana, you remember me. This is my son. I have named him Kwame. He looks just like your son, Kwame. And my daughter Rainika's hair is the same as when you finish braiding Afia's. Ghana, you remember me. I know. We'll cook. You make your okra soup. I'll make my gumbo. You'll see. They taste alike. You remember me. 
I have an idea. We'll go dancing. We'll get dressed. Our bodies look the same in this beautiful African fabric. And we've got the same moves. Hey! Ghana, you remember me. Hmm. I must admit, they did a number on us over there. But then I look around Ghana and I see they've done a number on us over here as well. You know, over there they told me that I could not come here, that I would not want to come back here, that you don't like me here. But you know what, they lied. So here I am, and never again, never again will we part. Ghana, you remember me. Tonight, before you go to sleep, speak to your ancestors. Speak to your grandmother's grandmother's great-grandmother and tell her her sweet sister's daughter has returned. Ghana, you remember me. I know you remember me. You must remember me because I never stopped remembering you. I should. Oh, that was beautiful, Miss Naya. Thank you so much for sharing. I think it's so beautiful, like us coming back, you mm -hmm. know, as black people, especially coming from the West, especially America, mm -hmm. where we have been so mistreated. And coming here, finding that connection is beautiful. And that's your special connection with Ghana. Yes. You're almost coming back from where you were born. Yeah. And I think that that's amazing and that's incredible. So thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming on my channel. And also, you're gonna for the house, you're gonna make it on an Airbnb, right? Yes, Some of it? yes. Okay, so, so everyone is invited. Okay, definitely. You are invited. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so Alrighty, much. Alrighty, thank you. On. I enjoyed it. And thank, thank you so you much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, please don't forget to get, forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you soon. Bye.